Welcome back to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. Behind us is the actual fuselage skin from the test comet that was tested in Farnborough in 1954 to identify the cause of those crashes. This second video will discuss the work undertaken to find out the causes of the two fatal crashes that occurred earlier that year. In October of that year, a court of inquiry was established, chaired by Lord Cohen, to discover the cause of the crashes. Not only do we have the last surviving Comet 1 fuselage intact at the museum, and the fractured failure test section, but also a copy of the report findings into the crash. De Havilland were fully involved in assisting the investigation into the tragedies and worked closely with the Royal Aircraft Establishment at Farnborough. BOAC donated an airframe for water tank pressure tests at Farnborough. The most likely explanation was felt to be fuselage decompression and breakup. Once wreckage was found, other potential causes were eliminated, such as over-rotation stall and engine failure. When flying at 40,000 feet, the pressure difference across the hull skin, allowing for an internal pressurisation of about 8,000 feet, is around 8.5 pounds per square inch. This figure was known as P. The pressurisation and depressurisation was repeated thousands of times at the test tank at Farnborough until the fuselage failed. The fuselage had withstood loads of up to 11 pounds per square inch, 30% higher than required, with no problem. However, once strain gauges were fixed across aperture corners, pressures of up to 43,000 pounds per square inch were recorded. These figures were completely beyond anything believed realistic at the time. These results from Farnborough would be key to the inquiry being able to offer a properly considered judgment on what had happened and decide whether the crashes were avoidable and given the knowledge at the time make recommendations for future aircraft manufacture. This test section helped us to identify the cause of the crashes. So if you look closely, here we've got the rivet holes where those rivets were put in place and there's a small tear there. That was as a result of those rivets being punched through and not drilled. As a result, a small amount of additional strain that propagated through the entire fuselage. The first comet to crash off Italy was largely recovered and when assembled, the failure point was in the roof behind the cockpit where the ADF, that's the automatic direction finding windows were. The second aircraft failed initially around the rear escape hatch window. The shape of the windows is not relevant as they are squareoid in shape and in fact the window shape of a Comet 1 is within 5% radius of a Boeing 737. Subsequent Comet models had oval windows as the rivet technique was abandoned and the windows were redux bonded. It also served the purpose of addressing the public anxiety about flying in a plane with square windows. Did the inquiry conclude that de Havilland were culpable for the aircraft crashes because of defective design and testing? And we have a copy of the report here at the museum and the findings tell us a lot. It says that the Havillands were proceeding in accordance with what was then regarded as good engineering practice. The pressure testing of the cabin was able to tolerate nearly double the P figure, but at the time the corner stress amplification was not fully understood. It also appears that the stress testing de Havilland had done prior to the comet's launch might inadvertently have strengthened the fuselage structure of the test specimen. So getting a true result for an aircraft in service was invalidated. 
The inquiry concluded a combination of square windows and rivet fastening techniques were to blame. At least de Havilland were not deemed negligent in this case. They fulfilled all of the testing that was required at that particular time. If you've liked this video, please like, subscribe and share. And join us for the third video where we'll discuss how de Havilland came back very successful jet airliner. See you at the museum.